Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Wednesday, December 30th, 2020. I am Dave Biddle. I am joined by Matt Baxendale. Just two days away from the showdown, Ohio State against Clemson, college football playoff semifinals. Bax, let's start with Justin Fields. Your concern level with his thumb, he has a sprained thumb. He says he's going to be good to go two nights from now. Do you have any concerns about Justin Fields' thumb? Like 1% to be honest, like that's the sort of injury that happens in a game. You hit your thumb on a helmet or something, or you get stoved whenever you're stiff arming someone that can happen. Right. From everything we've heard, he's thrown the ball fine in practice. Uh, Garrett Wilson said as much, he said, he looks good to me. So that's all I really need to hear. I, I think if you're OSU, you maybe let the mystery linger a little bit just to mess with Clemson, but there's no reason to believe that Justin Fields isn't going to be perfectly capable of ripping and ripping the football on Friday night in the Sugar Bowl. So I don't really have a ton of concern about that particular one. Let's get into something that you're concerned about regarding the game and something that you really feel good about. We'll start with the bad. We'll start with something that concerns you about this matchup from the Buckeye standpoint. My biggest concern is that they're not going to have Sean Wade follow Amari Rogers all over the field like they should. Uh, the Clemson receiving core this year, I said this in the bucket this weekend, too. I don't think either of these teams are as good as they were at this point last year. I think both teams were probably stronger overall programs um, in terms of the experience and the talent combination on the field last year in the bowl game. That doesn't mean that both teams aren't still excellent teams, but I don't think they're either of them really quite as good as last year. And one spot I think that stands out is in terms of Clemson's receivers, right? They had T. Higgins. They had Justin Ross last year. Like that's a good, Those are two were studs, right? And OSU was able to counter it by having three first-round level corners on the field, right? They don't have that this year. They have one in Sean Wade. And the reality is Amari Rogers is by far their best receiver. And I really don't want to see Seven Banks or Marcus Williamson lining up on him. I want to see Wade following him. That's what I'm hoping happens because that's my big fear is that we're going to get gouged in some of these passing plays, like I'm sure everybody else is feeling. Um, and I don't want to pick on some on any Buckeyes and be like, well, I hope Marcus Hooker doesn't play. But, like, we've seen better safety play, right? But the reality is Amari Rodgers needs to have a, a, a Sean Wade blanket thrown over him in this game. So that's my, that's my biggest concern is the passing game not being defensed in a way where you're lining your best up against their best and trying to mitigate it. And I think it's a big edge for OSU if you can keep Wade on, a, on Rodgers over the course of the game. Um, flip side of your question, is it uh, the, the best feeling I have about this game? The best feeling I have about this game is the utter disrespect being shown to Ohio State by seemingly everybody in the media, uh, down to not just the media, but Dabo Swinney. Like, if you listen to, like, Sirius XM or any of these other national publication radio stations, they're all talking about how this is a foregone conclusion for Clemson, and it's going to be Bama Clemson number five. And, like, like the, the line before OSU played Northwestern, then Clemson beat up Notre Dame, who – Hello, Notre Dame sucks in big games. They beat Clemson earlier this year when Clemson had none of their good players on the field and still almost lost. It went into overtime at home at Notre Dame with half a crowd. Is anybody shocked that Notre Dame got dummied? I'm not. So everybody all of a sudden goes from a week before the championship games where OSU was supposed to have been a Vegas favorite in this game to a 10-plus point swing where Clemson is now more than a touchdown favorite. It is incredible. Uh, our own Jonah Booker was on Twitter yesterday. And he had a comment where he's listening to Sirius XM, and he's like, these guys are talking about how OSU's D-line's not going to get any pressure against Clemson. Clemson's going to win by two-plus touchdowns. And Zach Harrison literally quoted the tweet and said, all right, I'll bet on that, right? Like, right now, I am stunned. And then, first of all, that's a horrible take. OSU literally has the PFF number one rated defensive line in the country. And you think they're not going to get pressure on an O-line that has a bunch of new starters outside of Jackson Carmen? Hello, that's the stupidest take of the game. But B, OSU has heard everybody from Dabo Swinney on down saying they shouldn't be in this game. And I'm sorry, but these are college guys. These are young men, right? This is the sort of game where all bowl games, to a certain extent, it matters who gives a crap about being there. Their give a damn level makes a big difference, right? And OSU came out last year with a give a damn level that caught Clemson off guard, right? So I'm amazed that anybody thinks this is going to be anything other than a tight game. And if this is going to be a blowout one way or the other, it's going to be because OSU comes out and trounces them because they're already looking forward to Bama and listening to their coaches BS about how, oh, yeah, I know, it's Ohio State. uh, They shouldn't even be here, right? 
that to me is by far the best thing that could be going on right now. I am thrilled that people are treating OSU like there's some donkey program that isn't loaded with all kinds of NFL level talent and a top five or 10 pick at quarterback who, if he plays well in this game, may be the number two pick behind Trevor Lawrence. Right. So that is easily the best thing going on here is how much disrespect is being slung at the Buckeyes. Yeah. When I analyze these rosters, I mean, the talent is very equal. We're going to look back on these rosters and maybe we'll say Ohio state was more talented. That's why the whole, to your point backs, the whole, this is a David versus Goliath matchup is just nonsense to me. And I love it though. I absolutely love it. Even if this game was like a pick em or Clemson was like a one point favorite, I would still like the fact that Ohio State was coming up with the chip on their shoulder from what happened last year and being a slight underdog. But considering what happened last year, where Ohio State feels like they were the better team, and I, I definitely feel like Ohio State was the better team yeah, last that's year. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Worst replay official that I've ever seen in football. Uh, I, you there know, is a conspiracy the conspiracy there officials that's is not really hard to reach, Dave. I mean, if it's not jumping at shadows. It's easy to jump at shadows. How's that sound? Whenever not one but two game-changing decisions come directly from the SEC replay office in Birmingham after the SEC champ clinches the national title berth against the winner of these two games, and OSU is dominating at both instances. So, yeah, I mean, like, you're right. It, there is no way, shape, or form OSU isn't going to be the more motivated team before all this shenanigans. It's already interrupt, but that, that's just night and day, the difference between the way these two teams are going in. No, absolutely. Um, we are uh, in complete congruence on this. It's just amazing to me that that it looks like, you know, from the outside, this is a some like, you know, like like they're playing Rutgers or something like that, like it's Rutgers against Clemson. It's like – and I again, though, I, let's just keep that going. Don't get mad about that if you're a Buckeye fan. Like, that's great. I mean, they were going to be motivated regardless. They are absolutely – I've been on the Zoom calls the last couple of days with the players and the coaches. They – you know, they're watching what they say, but you can easily read between the lines – that has extra motivated them. Wyatt Davis talked about it. You know, again, they're trying to be careful. They don't want any bulletin board material the other way. But absolutely, this disrespect they're getting, they've definitely noticed it. And, yeah, just to finish my thought, I mean, you know, on-field officials, okay, if you miss a call, that's going to happen. I mean, these guys are going like a million miles an hour. It, it's a tough job. The replay official, though, I mean, it's the easiest job in the world. You've got 20 camera angles. You've got – Slow motion replay. It's just it's the easiest job in the world. It really is, and that was a shame last year. All right, let's let's get down to brass tacks and give our prediction for a final score in this game. Uh, we're gonna have our staff roundtable later this week where we answer some questions and give a prediction for the final score. But we will uh, give a little teaser for that and give our final score now. All right, I'll go first, backs. I think the Buckeyes are going to get it done. Not just cover the spread of seven and a half, which if you're into betting, I, I think that is that's way too easy high money. Seven and a half. I mean, I think, you know, obviously Ohio State could lose this game, but I think they're going to keep it within a touchdown. I like Ohio State to win this game outright. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a dogfight, just like it was last year. My final score prediction is Ohio State 35, Clemson 31, and a thriller. What do you got for me? <laughs> Your score is super close to mine. I'll, I'll, be, I'll admit that uh, we're going to be in our similar level of lockstepness, if you will, uh, in terms of opinions on this game, but – I think Ohio State is going to come out with a punch similar to what we saw last year, except they think they're going to get more than one touchdown out of their first four drives and the rest of the field goal settled. I don't think Clemson's run defense is going to do well with OSU's mauling O-line. I also think that the way Clemson is going to have success is through running Trevor Lawrence a lot, just like they did last year. They run him in big games. They don't really run him otherwise because they don't need to. I think Ohio State, though, is going to come out with a punch. And I think that punch is going to be enough to hold this time. Uh, and in my mind, I think that Ohio State's defensive line is significantly better than Clemson's offensive line, particularly inside in the middle of the trenches. Look, their best player on the O-line is Jackson Carmen by a wide margin. And the reality is Ohio State's two most dominant defensive linemen all year have been defensive tackles with the Samoan connection inside. And Togi I and Garrett are – as good as it's been in college football, a D-tackle this year, and that's not hyperbole, like, like I referenced earlier. It's the number one rated offensive line or defensive line in the country, according to PFF. So I think Ohio State's going to come out with a big punch. I think that big punch is going to be significant. And Clemson's going to fight back because they are good, right? Like nobody's saying that Clemson isn't good. They're just saying Ohio State sucks, apparently. I think Ohio State is going to win this game. I think covering the spread is, if you're into that sort of thing, I've seen it at eight and a half already. Um, that to me is free money. 
Uh, Ohio State has played Clemson three times this decade. Twice they have lost by five and six points. And then the other one was the disaster year where we couldn't throw the ball forward and weren't playing the right quarterback, and the defense did everything they could to keep it close. This is not a similar team to that. Ohio State and Clemson are going to be tight. I think Ohio State wins 37-31 to 31 and goes on to play Bama in the national championship. Or we can have this similar conversation again because everybody's going to say Bama's going to murder Ohio State after they boat race Notre Dame, which of course they're going to do because Notre Dame is your classic Notre Dame team that flops in big games. They're like Michigan. They can't win a big game against anybody except for like their local teams. So Ohio State 37, Clemson 31. I think the Buckeyes are going on to the championship game. And then we can talk about Bama this time next week, and it'll certainly be a really fun conversation. Yeah, problem I want to have is us getting irritated that people are saying Ohio State has no chance against Alabama in the national championship game after they beat Clemson. I love it. So you have 37-31, I have 35-31, so you have the Buckeyes getting that late safety uh, just to tack on to the, to the final score. I like it. Hey, last thing, um, it's been a big story all week, and, and, and we'll see if there's anything to it. I tend to think it won't happen, but it's definitely interesting. I am talking about the idea of Urban Meyer – to the NFL as a head coach. A, do you think it'll happen? B, if it did happen, would it work? Ooh. Well, I'm going to couch this all by saying I firmly believe Urban won't coach again for two reasons. One, those health issues are real. They're not like, you know, the stuff he got made fun of when he left Florida, right, where he had to get his health back in line. These are much more serious, debilitating, brain-related. Like, you manage it, but you can't let it inflame, right? So one, he has health issues. And two, even if those health issues aren't enough, Shelly's going to kill him if he tries to coach again. So I just, I will have to, to me, Urban Meyer is the new John Gruden. Every job is going to be Urban Meyer, NFL or college, Urban Meyer, UCLA, Urban Meyer, Tennessee, Urban Meyer, USC, Urban Meyer, Texas, Urban Meyer, right? And then NFL teams. Oh, let's, let's send him to the Jaguars, Urban Meyer, Urban Meyer, Urban Meyer, Urban Meyer. If he really has a stress-related thing on his brain that caused him to look like people were punching him in the face during games in 2018, he won't coach again. And he certainly won't be able to convince his wife to be on board with it, who's very protective of his health for very good reason. I don't see the juice being worth urban squeeze to leave the pristine prime role in commentating on college football that he currently occupies to coach again, particularly at a level he has never coached at does not possess the offensive preferred scheme that really the NFL runs. Look, it's, it's a fun conversation, but every job in my opinion is going to be urban Meyer as the number one name out of everyone's mouth for the next five years. I don't believe urban's going to coach again because I believe the health issues will be too much. And again, like I said, Shelly will kill him. So, you know, urban's going to, he has the right to do whatever he so chooses. I will certainly not hate the man, after everything he did for Ohio state and all the good he did. And and obviously the way he left the program in amazing shape. I just don't believe urban's going to coach again. And I think urban's going to spend the next 20 years as the new Lee Corso, the new, the new Keith Jackson, potentially whenever Fox inevitably puts him on the calls because he's an excellent broadcaster and he's more than making plenty of money. He's made more than enough money in his life. That money isn't going to be a reason for urban to do anything at this point. So I don't believe it's going to happen. I will have to see it to believe it. And and I just, he's the new John Gruden. And I don't think he'll ever end up coming back like Gruden did after 16 years. Urban to me is a retired broadcaster and one of the greatest coaches of all time for college football. I just don't see him going to coach anywhere, much less a level that is not really his best suited case. Because let's face it, his best strength in college football was as a recruiter. So he could overwhelm you with talent at worst case. Can't do that in the NFL. So I don't think it's going to happen. Let the talk happen. It's fun. But brass tacks, I don't think Urban ever takes a coaching job again. Great stuff from Matt Baxendale. Thank you, Bax. Happy New Year. Enjoy the game Friday night, Bucknutters. (laughs) 